Well, my dear brothers and sisters, the year 2024 has begun with the sad news of the death of our beloved Bishop Lawrence Nicasio, Lawrence Sidney Nicasio. Yet his was a holy death. At, he died at 4.54 a.m. just a few hours ago this morning in his residence in Belize City. He was under hospice care after an extended and debilitating struggle with cancer. Yet his death was one of peace because he was a man of holiness. I think it is always a sign of holiness when a person dies on one of the great feast days of the church, especially of Our Lady, like Our Lady brings him herself on, on this feast day, the Mother of God. His funeral arrangements will, will be announced shortly. Now today is the great feast day of the church. January 1st, 2024, we are actually celebrating though three things simultaneously. So number one, today is the eighth day of Christmas and the last day of the octave of Christmas. And in obedience to the law of Moses, on this day, baby Jesus was circumcised and received his name, Yeshua in Hebrew, as the gospel says. Now, the second thing we are celebrating on this solemnity is the solemnity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. In Greek, the title, Mother of God, is pronounced like this. Please repeat after me. Theotokos. Theotokos. Theo is God, tokos is mother. And this is a title that the church officially gave to the Blessed Virgin Mary in the year 431 and an official council of the church in Ephesus. Now to proclaim, they did this to proclaim that this baby boy, it's a big airplane. <laughs> they did this to proclaim that this baby boy named Jesus truly is the son of God, true man and true God. And finally, the third thing that we celebrate today, of course, is the beginning of the new year of grace, the new year of the Lord, 2024. Now, in the Bible, the new year actually does not start on January the 1st. In the Bible, the biblical year in the Jewish calendar, it begins with the first day of a month called Nisan. Like in Hebrew, that's what it's called, Nisan in Hebrew. Like the Nisan cars, that's where it comes from. Now, the month of Nisan occurs in the spring, and it is the same month where the Jewish people celebrated the Passover. We're in the same month, of course, where our Lord died and rose from the dead for our salvation and to make all things new. When Jesus rose from the dead, a new creation blossomed, you could say. And so truly, it is Jesus who makes all things new. And therefore, the newness of this new year comes from not from the calendar, but from the grace obtained by the Son of God. Jesus is in fact the Lord of all time, the Lord of time, because He is the eternal I Am. And so our Lord Jesus is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Every year, every day, and every moment, every second are embraced by His incarnation and resurrection. And so we rejoice to welcome this new year of 2024 in the beautiful name of our Savior and Lord, Jesus, the Messiah. Now that said, turn with me to the first reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 22 forward. And it says this, This is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace so shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites, and I will bless them. Okay, so let's stop right there. These immortal words are the priestly blessing commanded to Aaron and his sons in the Old Testament. And I think the church chose this reading because she wants us to start the new year with many blessings. With many blessings. What, what is a blessing? Well, let me give you a simple definition from the catechism. It's article 1078. A blessing is, and I quote, a divine and life-giving action, the source of which is the Father. His blessing is both word and gift. Okay, so according to the catechism, a blessing is a divine action that comes from our Father. It consists of a word, and it gives the gift of life. It is life-giving. 
This is why it's important to wait for the priestly blessing at the end of Mass and not be like the first one to the restaurant, you know, in the mornings. And the priests can bless people and objects and places, consecrating them to God for a very specific mission. And yet today, I want to start this year full of blessings. And so I, I want to lead you in, a, in just some prayers of blessing that if you wish, you could repeat after me. If you wish to repeat these prayers of blessing, repeat after me. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God Almighty. Almighty. The whole earth is filled with your glory. The whole earth is filled with your glory. You are the source of all life and blessing. You are the, the source, source of, of all, all life, life and, and blessings. And we thank you for all your blessings. And we thank you for all your blessings. That we are going to receive this new year. That we are going to receive this new year. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I break and destroy all curses and evil. I, I break, break and, and destroy, destroy all curses and evil. Against me or my family. Against me or my family. And I declare God's blessings over my family. And I declare God's blessings over my family. To fulfill God's purpose and destiny. To fulfill God's purpose and destiny. I also declare. I also declare. That my house. That my house and my family and my family will serve Jesus Christ. Will serve Jesus Christ all the days of our life. All the days of our life. Amen. Amen. Now I invite husbands or wives to bless each other. If your spouse is here, great. If they're not, you can still bless them. If you wish from afar, if you wish, repeat after me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare that our home. I declare that our home is a place of love and faith. Is a place of love and faith. Of fidelity and peace. Of fidelity and peace. And I lose the blessings and promises of the Lord. And I lose the blessings of, and promises of the Lord. Upon our life, our family, and our home. Upon, upon our, our life, life, our family, family and, and our home. Amen. Amen. And now, parents, bless your children. If you're next to your child or even if they're far from here, you can speak the blessing. If you wish, parents, repeat after me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I place my children's purpose and destiny. I place my, my children's, children's purpose and destiny. In the hands of Almighty God. In the hands of Almighty God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly. The Lord look upon you kindly. And give you peace. And give you peace. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. So I think we're starting off the new year with many blessings. Continue the blessings throughout the year. Anybody you meet, anybody you talk to, just bless them for this coming year in Jesus' name. Now together, let's go to the gospel according to Luke chapter 2 verse 16 forward, and, and let's focus on how the Virgin Mary responded to the message of the shepherds. Verse 18 to 19 says this, all who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds, and Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Okay, so how did the Virgin Mary respond? She did two things. She kept and she reflected upon all these things where? In her heart. Now, the Greek word translated kept can literally be translated she treasured. Now, the message about her baby was a treasure. And she placed that treasure deep in her heart. I think an important lesson for us is to understand the treasures that God has given us in 2023. And learn how to treasure the gifts that have been given to you and place them deep in your heart. No, understand what truly is of value in your life. And I pray that you may learn to treasure not just the words of our Lord and the, and the Eucharist, but all the treasures that God has given you in your life <coughs> and place them deep in your heart. Now, Mary's second was, response was to reflect or to meditate. Now, the original Greek word literally means to piece together. This means that Our Lady didn't have all the facts. 
from the angels. You know, she got a little information here, a little here, another angel here, another little from Joseph, a, from different people. And, it, and she was literally sort of putting the pieces together, sort of like solving a puzzle by placing all the pieces of information she got together. I think this is an imp important lesson for us. To better, live God's, to better live God's plan for your life in 2024, I encourage you to first review the key events and the memories of 2023 and place them together. Almost like a puzzle, little pieces here and there, but you place them together because through that you begin to see how God has been guiding your life. This is what I do every year at the beginning of the year. I, make, I work on what I call my plan of life. So I'll do four things. I'll, I'll share this with you. Number one, I make a list of all the key events and memories from 2023 or any, un, any resolutions that I didn't focus on. Last year, I think I had about 30 or so memories that were, I think, important for me. Second thing is then I sign each of these memories, one of the mysteries of the rosary. Those mysteries that were joyful, I'll say, oh, you're the joyful mystery. If it was a mystery, if it was something, a, a memory that reminded me or I had light from in prayer, I, it's a luminous mystery. Or if it was a sorrowful mystery, I'm sure I'll put the, like the bishop's death this morning. Eh, I'll, I'll write that. That's a sorrowful mystery or a glorious mystery. Categorize the, mis the events of your life as one of the mysteries of the rosary because they're, they're the life of Christ and the life of Jesus is being lived also in you in 2023. Number three, then write for each of these events what lesson you think God is trying to teach you through that event. God is always teaching us something. If you're open to learning, if you're wise, you're going to learn from everything. If you're stupid, you won't. It'll just be a waste of time. But if you're wise, you'll try to see a lesson in all the events that God is guiding you. And it's very important. Because if you don't learn the lessons of 2023, then God will probably repeat those lessons in 2024. And you might still be repeating the lessons he wanted to give you back in 2020, and you're spinning your wheels in your life. Because you're not, a, a, you're not assimilating the lessons that he's trying to teach you. Very important to reflect in life. The final thing then that I do is after I write each of the lessons, then I try to come up with an action item that I can do to better my life in 2024, to be more aligned to his plan for my life. And based on all these actions, that's where I come up with my goals and my dreams and my resolutions for 2024. In particular, I make sure that I cover at least five areas of my life that I establish goals and dreams for. Number one, spiritual. So what spiritual goals do you have for 2024? If you don't have any goals, you ain't going to grow spiritually. You need some goals and purposes. Second area is your formation, your intellectual formation. How are you growing? How are you learning something new intellectually? My mother always used to ta teach me, always be learning something new. And so what are you going to learn that is new in this year 2024? A third area could be relational. What relationships do you need to work on? Your spouse, your children, your family, your friends. Get some goals into that. Now I'm going to spend more time with my best friend. I'm going to spend time. I'm going to visit my grandma or, or my aunt. I'm going to spend, I'm going to take care of that. What goals is God placing in your heart relationally? Finally, or, or for personal growth. How can you grow personally? What virtues? You know, in 2024, I'm not going to drink any more alcohol. Or in 2024, I'm going to do exercise two or three times a week. Or I'm going to learn how to scuba dive. Or I'm going to, you know, eat better. Whatever personal growth goals that you have, establish them. Because if you don't establish them, you're not going to grow. You're not going to grow. Finally, get some goals for your work or for your ministry. What goals do I need for my ministry? What goals do I need for my work? You know, my brothers and sisters, we stand at the door of this new year. And, and I have some really big dreams for this new year. You know, I've shared before, we want to build a new school. We want to build a new high school. We want to build a columbarium. 
you know, I, I think our Lord just inspired me to name one of the new buildings of our school, you know, after our bishop, our beloved bishop who approved this project. And so I invite you to develop your own goals and your own dreams for 2024. Because if you want to become a better version of yourself in 2024 than you were in 2023, if you want to exchange the bad habits of 2023 for the good habits of 2024, if you want to be holier and more faithful and more loving and healthier and more successful and happier and more productive in 2024, then you need to do as Our Lady did. She treasured in her heart the memories and lessons God was teaching her. And she literally reflected upon them and took the pieces and brought them together. She made sense of what God was doing in her life. And this is how you also can make sense of what God is doing in your life. And I'll finish by with this, going back to the gospel. Luke, 20, Luke 2, 20. Then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Now, I want you to notice those shepherds did not return to work sad and depressed, you know, up all night. No, they returned glorifying and praising God. Shepherds returned to their work with new vigor, with new hope, strength, and faith after encountering our Lord. That's my prayer for you, that you return home today or later this week to your family, to your work, to your school with new vigor, with new hope, with new courage, because you understand God's plan for your life. If you understand how he's guiding you in the future, then you better look to the past because that's exactly the same way he's going to be guiding you in the future. God is very consistent. My brothers and sisters, may baby Jesus bless you and keep you. May he let his beautiful face shine upon you and may he look upon you kindly and give you peace. Shalom. Oh, come all ye faithful. Joyful and triumphant, O oh, come ye, O oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. O oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Happy New Year, everyone.